to the Family Movie Night Podcast, where we want to help your family have better conversations around the content you consume. My name is Nathan, and as I'm always joined by the hero of our podcast, Donnie Dorsey, the villain of our podcast, Sawyer Hewlett. And unfortunately, we don't get to be joined by Heidi uh, Cooper, who normally joins us here. She is out of town, and uh, we know she's having a great time wherever she is. But maybe not as good of a time as us talking about this movie, because we are talking about Cruella from 2021, uh, released both in theaters and as part of the Disney Plus uh, premiere. Uh, where you pay 30 bucks and you could have the movie the day it released. Uh, this is available currently on Disney+. Plus. If you have not seen it, uh, this is kind of a prequel to 101 Dalmatians and kind of, I wouldn't even call it a prequel because I don't think this seamlessly falls fa- follows, uh, it, it, I don't think 101 Dalmatians seamlessly follows this movie, but this is kind of like a redemption for the character of Cruella DeVille. So this movie is about Estella, a young and cl- uh, clever grifter who's determined to make a name for herself in the fashion world. She soon meets a pair of thieves who appreciate her appetite for mischief. And uh, together they build a life for themselves on the streets of London. However, when Estella befriends fashion legend Baroness von Hellman, she embraces her wicked side to become the raucous and revenge bent Cruella. So, Donnie Dorsey, before we talk about this movie, tell them what we do on this podcast. Yeah, so on this podcast, we encourage every family at Community Christian Church to have a monthly movie night to help you and your children build memories and start conversations that matter. The goal of our family ministry is to help you raise your children to love Jesus and his way of life above all other things. And we know that critical to that is for you to have a routine, regular time of connection and shared experiences that will help you build stronger relationships. And, uh, you know, we believe that movie nights are a great opportunity to do that, whether you are, you know, sharing laughter and joy or even like fear and sadness uh, in a safe environment. You know, that's what this is about. But even more than that, having wonderful conversations with your kid uh during or after the movie and as always uh this doesn't need to be anything that just is added to your list of things as a parent that you feel guilty about not doing our goal on this is to make it easier for you and your family to be together to build memories to have fun and to have conversations that not only help them love Jesus more, but to help love his way of life more, his, the character he wants to build into us. Because the more that we exhibit Jesus' character in his way of life, the more we will love him and see how his way leads us to flourishing in an abundant life. And so we want to have a conversation today about this film, Cruella. We think it has great Uh, themes, great conversations for you as a parent to talk about with your kids and really to kind of talk about the negative aspects um, of of what's kind of exhibited in this movie. But before we get to that, let's just talk about uh, how this movie, it works as a movie that's fun and uh, that, you know, really children of all ages can watch, I think. Uh, I mean, I think there's certainly nothing. It's a pretty clear Disney movie. Uh, I don't know if this is rated PG or PG-13. Uh, it's PG-13. PG-13. Uh, but I assume it's mainly for some of the kind of darker things that Cruella does. Uh, there doesn't... Anyway, I don't think it's... My kids watched it. Uh, my five-year-old loves it. So uh, there certainly is nothing, I think, too objectionable in this. So uh, let's just get to how it works. So Sawyer, you're the villain, man. Uh, you got a cold, dead heart, just like Cruella. Uh, what, what what do you love about this movie, man? Uh, I love a lot of things about this movie. Um, number one, Emma, I mean, Emma Stone carries the movie for the most part. I'm, I'm oh, gonna yeah. Get to, really great. I'm going to get to a caveat on that. She's the she's the most present character, and she she really brings it in this movie um, as the title character. Um, but the supporting cast also brings it, okay? And I just, I want to echo uh, some praise. Number one for the villain, okay? Emma Thompson in this movie, giving off real devil wears prada vibes and i yes. i love every second that emma thompson is on screen but i also love i think her she crew. is loving i think she is oh. loving every minute she is on the screen oh, she emma is thompson, eating that scenery man she's having a blast and you can tell from scene one that she's in okay she's yes. having a blast in this movie. i also love cruella's crew though okay oh yes uh, joel fry playing the character jasper and okay I I shout out Sandra O oh every time that she's in a movie on on this podcast. 
every time that Paul Walter Hauser is in a movie yeah. on this podcast, I'm going to shout him out because he is so good in this movie and in he every is movie. Doing, he is doing both the worst and the best British accent at the exactly. same time. It's it is so, so cheesy and bad, but it's so perfect for what he's exactly. doing. Exactly. I I love Paul Walter Hauser in this movie. And uh, and yeah, so I love love the the characters. And also, like, we were talking about this before we started filming. Like, this movie rolls. Like, its pacing is, like, perfect. Each act is very different and distinct. Yeah. Um, and it's very fast-paced. Like, when I was watching this movie, I was like, oh, gosh, this is a long movie. And then I checked how much longer. And there was only, like, 10 or 15 minutes left. I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah. It's not that long. Well, and I think it... Uh, so I wrote this down. I think this movie looks and feels incredibly cool. Like, it is set during the 70s punk rock scene in London, and, and the movie, the way it is shot, the way it is uh, edited together, the 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 stylish, you know, kind of flir stylistic flourishes that are in the movie, it feels punk rock, and it feels cool and edgy, and, the, I mean, as edgy as a Disney movie can feel, but it it, it, it has a grit to it that just feels yeah. cool. There, there are some really cool needle drops in the movie. For instance, oh, I put that. Where it, it is the best needle drop soundtrack. All right, I'm gonna say it. Y'all love me for my hot takes, or you hate me for my hot takes. Better needle drop soundtrack than Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Sawyer wants to leave. <laughs> Sawyer wants to leave. I'm just saying the needle drops in this are perfect and perfectly captured. Look, I ain't hating on. I ain't hating on 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 Redbone or what what was the what, what's the uh, when when Cat Stevens father and son comes no, on no, 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 and the movie no. closes no, on Rocket no. crying that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two my friend okay. Guardians I did not okay, say Guardians enough. of the Galaxy Volume Two I'm talking about Guardians of the Galaxy the original okay, I agree with the Cat okay. Stevens use of of Islam much better. Yeah. Then, uh, but I'm just saying this one right here is pretty darn good. It's pretty good. I, it is good. All right, all right, very good. All right, Donnie, uh, the hero of our podcast. I know you probably can't jive with all of this movie, but but what what did work for you in this movie, my friend? I mean, I think it just it does so well at capturing so many different movie elements. There is heist scenes. There are comical scenes. There are like empowering scenes there are the back and for, forth uh, physical comedy scenes like there is so much in this movie to to bring in just about anybody to enjoy this movie that i mean i can't say enough about it like it's just it was i i came into it and i was like okay this is i don't know what to expect and when i came into it and everything that happened in that movie i was so pleasantly surprised by how well they were able to effortlessly seem 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 all of these things and elements together. Yeah, and I wonder, you know, I, I so so Sawyer kind of hit on this, and you're kind of hitting on this too. This movie works, and I'll say it works for all ages. Um, uh, I think kids will love it. So I'll say this: here's a couple things I loved, and then I'll kind of comment on the other things. I love the fashion design in this movie. I'm not even the kind of I, fashion design. I love visuals. But there's a whole sequence in the middle where she's trying to get revenge by kind of ruining the stealing the reputation of the Baroness by kind of upstaging her at all of these events at every costume. I have never been that excited for costume changes in any movie ever, but it's basically like a Marvel action sequence, but just with someone wearing different dresses in every scene. I mean absolutely great in the very first one where she burns that dress off and she's got the red dress underneath about the coolest character introduction. I mean, just so cool that it is, that is her Raiders of the lost Ark, Indiana Jones entrance scene, but she is burning off a dress. It's just absolutely cool. Um, I'll say this movie in the middle turns into a heist movie. And I told the guys earlier, I think since oceans 11, the 2000, I guess, 2001, 2002 oceans 11, um, this might be the best heist movie since then. Just that kind of 30, 45 minute section in the middle. Um, and we're already spoiling this movie because we got to talk about the themes of it. Uh, there's a scene where a dress is made out of Marth moth like cocoons. And it just that moment is so cool when she opens that and the moths come out and the dresses have been eaten. 
Man, it's just so cool. It is just so cool. My girls love it. They thought she that Cruella is so cool. They thought the character design is so cool. They think the dresses are so cool. Um, and I think this movie really works on in a lot of different ways. And so uh, here's one question I have. Because the costumes are so good, because the wig game is so strong in this, I'll just say the wigs look fantastic, except for... In a flashback, when Mark Strong's character has to have a wig on his head, is that wig, because the other wigs are so good, is that wig supposed to be comically bad? Is that? Uh, it's bad. It's, it's bad. bad. Yeah. Is they it, give up Superman Return vibes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is that the equivalent of Paul Walter Hauser's British accent that is so bad? <laughs> is that the equivalent of the Ango? Like, is that when every time he says the angle, I go, I don't think that's how a British person yeah. would say that, but I love the way you're saying it. Uh, anyway, I, so we're all saying, yes, watch this with your kids. I'd say boys will love it, but I think girls are going to love it. My girls love this is their superhero movie. Cruella is their superhero, which may lead into our themes that we have the discussion of. One thing I think this movie is kind of complicated on is the themes of what it wants to deal with. So just like this movie has a lot of different kind of genres it messes with, it seems to want to be a lot of different themes at once. And so I think in a lot of ways, this movie wants to be a kind of um, a, a strong woman, female empowerment kind of, uh, you know, female icon kind of movie. This is a woman who was kind of, you know, timid, and uh, reserved and through embracing her Cruella, uh, whatever persona, I guess, she learns to be strong and confident. And I think that angle of the movie, that's one theme the movie could have been about. But at the same time, so in one way, Cruella is kind of the empowered, confident woman uh, who's not timid, who learns to kind of use her voice, which I think if that's one good thing you could talk about. But the problem is they equally tie Cruella's confidence, empowerment with cruelty. Uh, because this movie is at heart, I think, a message about how revenge does not work. So we want to give a few more plot details here to kind of explain that. And so, Sorry, why don't you do that? Why don't you kind of explain the revenge plot element? Like, why is it Cruella wants revenge on the Baroness? Just so it's not me talking the whole time. So why don't yeah. you explain that? So we set up in the movie that the Baroness is this legendary uh, fashion designer and that the Baroness may or may not be somehow involved with Cruella's mom's death is what we find out relatively early in the movie. What we then find out late in the movie is that the Baroness is Cruella's mom. And so Cruella throughout the movie, and like, look, I, I, I like that angle, actually. I, I'm not usually a fan of people like getting the reveal. It's very derivative of the Empire Strikes Back is the thing. Yes, this um, is the, uh, the Cruella, I am your father moment. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but what I like about it in this movie is that it explains these two dichotomies going on in this character. You've got Estella, who was raised by this relatively poor woman who, uh, you know, very humble person and stuff like that, very sweet. And you've got Cruella, who is the biological daughter of the Baroness, who is this legendary, um, uh, you know, very um, aggressive uh, fashion designer. Um, and so I like this dichotomy that the movie goes into. What I what I really think like is the movie is trying to be about is this dichotomy going on inside of the character of Cruella. Well, because Cruella's hair is literally black and white. And it's yes, unlike exactly. in the unlike in like the 101 Dimensions where the white is kind of woven into the hair, it's one half of her hair yeah. is white, one half of her hair is black. She's very much dark and light in one yes. character. Right. Yeah. And and so this but this dichotomy is kind of like the drive. I feel like it's the driving emotional force of the movie. And, you know, it, and one thing that I think it does, the movie does really well is having, you know, Cruella is this very passionate driven person. And Estella has these friends in Jasper and, um, goodness, I can't believe we're getting Paul. Horace, um, Jasper and Horace, who are kind of just her friends and she's dragging them along. And at one point Jasper is even like, 
we don't need to do this anymore. But Cruella has kind of taken over is the thing. The movie doesn't fully go, like it doesn't commit is the thing to being about the dissension of this character. But the movie throughout, especially the first two acts, is about that. And I really like it. And I think so what you find out is that the Baroness, right, uh, murdered her mom because yes. her mom is trying to reveal, hey, th- th- I, you know, you're, this is your daughter and I'm going to reveal that, all that kind of stuff. You need to take yes. care of her, all that kind of stuff. So the Baroness has Estella's mother killed. And Estella's mother has said to her from the, like, hey, you can't let Cruella out. You can't let Cruella mm-hmm. out. And as Sawyer said, the movie seems to really want to be about her merging these two characters, right? The dark and the light. And I think if that's what the movie wants to be about, which is like, hey, uh, Shang-Chi kind of does this too in the MCU, which is like, hey, you got to take the good and the bad. And people aren't just, uh, you know, villains and heroes. You've got to kind of bring the two into one. There's something maybe there. The problem is with this movie is that the weight of the plot mechanisms and what the movie is about is Cruella becoming cruel and wanting to destroy, to take revenge on the woman who killed her mother. Mm -hmm. And that what ends up happening is in order for her to merge the two, she has to embrace revenge and cruelty. And I, so the conversation we think this movie brings up that would be great to have with our kids is, is it ever okay for good people to do bad things? Is revenge ever okay? Because this movie is kind of like, hey, sometimes good people have to do bad things to bring about a good result. Because the other problem with this movie, and I actually think it's the problem with all of these Disney, hey, we're going to redeem the villain movies, is the reason you're going to see this movie is because you like the character of Cruella DeVille as an evil person who wanted to murder 101 Dalmatian puppies. Like, this is a cruel, evil person. She's vile. Her name is Devil, right? Like, and this movie's, the movie ends in such a way that you cannot imagine Emma Stone being the person to want to murder these people because they or these puppies i should say they they redeem her to such a point that says hey this kind of cruelty mixed with the light that's how you get a well balanced person at, at the end of this movie emma stone is not a psychopath is the no. thing. and that's that's yeah. the thing that this movie kind of just doesn't land on unfortunately well because i think the movie really does want to make this statement of let's bring together the dark and the light and that's what exactly. a well balanced person is is a person who Hey, they're good, but they're willing occasionally to get their hands dirty and do some bad things in order to bring about good causes. But that's not a very kingdom of God, uh, Jesus way of looking at things. Jesus right out says revenge is not the way we we love our enemies. We turn the other cheek. We carry uh, the pack an extra mile, right? We do good to those who persecute us. And this movie at times wants to show us how damaging revenge is, but then also wants to revel in it. So let's talk a little bit about the the ways this movie does well at talking about revenge uh, and cruelty and kind of bitterness and holding a grudge and how all those things are actually corrosive to your character. Uh, Donnie, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, Talk about kind of the fun part of this movie really is her trying to destroy uh, and 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 uh, kind of destroy the Baroness, but we do see how how th- it destroys her character of Cruella. So, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Donnie? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I mean, like as you watch Estella slowly kind of like morph in to this character of Cruella, like you see her slowly take bits and pieces of the good and the bad of both. And when I say the good and the bad, like I'm not saying that everything that Cruella does is evil or or anything's like good or bad, kind of like differences. But in the sense of like when when they're actually when she's doing certain things, she is she has intentions of redeeming things, but she does it in a way that compromises her character. Right. And that's the thing about it is that when she's going and she's like, okay, well, I'm going to work from within. I'm going to build myself up. I'm going to become a great this. 
like I'm become a great fashion designer or whatever her aspiration is in the specifically. Um, but as she slowly becomes more entrenched in this, this level of finding, like she sees the, you know, the necklace and it's almost like this a, necklace that the Baroness had stolen from exactly yeah. because specifically in the movie, what her mom says, or the, the woman that raised her, um, says to her, this is a family heirloom. And that wasn't a lie. So when she, but what she didn't know was it wasn't the heirloom of her mother, but of, of the woman that raised her, but also it was actually of the, the Baroness. Baroness who is her mother. And so when, when she's going through that, like that battle internally, I would imagine is that she's looking at this and going, okay, she killed the person that raised me and taught me all the good that I know, but she's also the person who's responsible for me being here. Right. And it's that struggle. I think that she's, it can, it does become corrosive because it's like, I could redeem my relationship with this person and try to mend the fences of this and and take an opportunity to offer forgiveness like and say hey look you did something that hurt me and broke me in a lot of ways right and, and i would like to restore or redeem this relationships and bring it bring it to a healthy balance but instead she decided that no you must have an ultimate you know ending to this this situation yeah. And that's what a lot of times it can be like in our character, like it can become very corrosive, like that, that revenge or that, oh, well, I have to make it even, I have to make it, you know, an eye for an eye, so to speak, um, in that sense. And it's like, it's like, well, you know, since you took out my mom, I got to take you out. I have to end this. And if it means burying my character of who I am, like if that means that I become this other person, then that's okay. because. I brought, I restored my mom's name, but when you look at it, her mom would have never told her to do that. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's one of the troubling parts to me about the movie is that moment where she's like, I can't be the Estella you always wanted me to. Mm -hmm. Cause the mom keeps saying like hide Cruella and the way the movie kind of lands is like, well, you should embrace both Cruella and Estella. And it kind of sets up a dichotomy that doesn't have to be, that doesn't yeah. have to exist, but the movie kind of, sets it up in that way and you know i thought about what you were saying there donnie of one we do see very much clearly in the movie the corrosive nature of it because there's a way in which some of us want to say hey i'm this person has hurt me has done me wrong and i'm gonna hold on to bitterness and anger i may even seek revenge on them and that hate that i let into my heart that bitterness that cruelty i let into my heart it's only going to affect this relationship it's mm -hmm. not going to affect my family it's not going to affect my friends but sin has a way of seeping into everything. And we see that in this movie. She ends up hurting Jasper and Horace, which are the only two people who really ever did, you know, fully love her and care about her other than, uh, you know, kind of the, the woman who raised her. And you see it kind of corroding that mm -hmm. and destroying that. Story. I, I feel like, yeah, like, and that, that relationship. So I, I feel like that relationship is like the litmus test for telling us where Cruella is at throughout the movie or at the beginning of the movie. Those are her friends. At the end of the movie, I feel like it actually does a good job of establishing these are her employees now. Yeah. Right. And and I like I I can't remember if it's felt the second to last shot. Her like one of the last couple of shots is kind of just Jasper kind of looking intimidated as he looks at her. She has this mansion now where they're gonna work out of, and he kind of just looks like intimidated when he's looking at her, which is not how he looked at her in the beginning of the movie. Right. So I really well, like that. And I think it's possible that in this movie, it, to have a good conversation with our kids of the Baroness is a pretty villainous character. I mean, what Absolutely. you eventually learn is that the, she didn't um, give up her daughter for adoption. She wanted her daughter uh, murdered. Yeah. Done away. With. So, I mean, she is a dis pretty despicable character, right? Yeah. And, it may be possible to have the conversation with our kids of, hey, Cruella probably couldn't mend that relationship. Like, this yeah. is a person that you may not be able to mend the relationship. But, Donnie, you brought this up earlier. This movie, uh, it certainly has that that vibe of people will do literally anything to avoid going to therapy. Uh, and this is a movie about a woman who has grief, 
who has hurt, who has yeah. been wronged. She's got trauma in her past. And instead of dealing with her grief and her hurt, she lashes out. Hurt mm -hmm. people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And you had kind of brought that up. What's a way we could have that conversation with our kids about, hey, we see Cruella being hurt. Is revenge the only way to deal with our hurt? Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I think the thing that's really important in things in dealing with any type of pain that is inflicted upon you um, is to understand, okay, what, what do I want as a resolution in this situation? What would, what would bring resolution? Like, and then the idea becomes, okay, well, you know, sometimes it may be something that really hurts very deeply. And the idea, the first idea is I want revenge. And the question becomes, okay, is that going to give you a resolution that will bring will improve your life and change things for the better or will this hurt you ultimately and i think a lot of times what ends up happening is that people will sacrifice their character in order to to do those things it's the idea of if i'm you know if i if i get revenge and that means i've i've done everything and and this is clear but what you've done is you essentially have created a seed of what you may do later because you're yeah. telling your you're telling yourself that the only way for any situation to be resolved is that I've removed like I do something bigger than the person that did something to me or mm -hmm. equally as bad and what it does and it that doesn't lead to what we think it does because I could if someone hurts me by saying hurtful words of course and like all the the terrible things they could say or whatever happens I can I can constantly let that control every action, emotion, thing I say, or I can choose to take time and heal from that and work right. on healing that because you know it's just the the same things with like grief. With grief, it's a it's a long standing thing. It's not a it it's not something that just goes away. But we learn to to be able to cope with it and be able to find ways and tools and resources to help us to live with it. Um, and it's the, but when it comes to things like this anger that we have towards someone who's hurt us really badly, we, we have to learn that, you know, and it's what, what Jesus has taught us is that we have to, we, the forgiveness, we have to offer forgiveness and lay that, you know, and it doesn't mean you can't, you know, be angry because right. that's the point of lamenting. Lamenting is getting that emotion out and 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 dealing with it, but you want to do it in a healthy way that doesn't further damage yourself. Yeah. You know, in, in that. So well, and I think what you're talking about here that's huge is the forgiveness part. And this is the part I think that the movie, because the movie wants to deal with dichotomies, uh, we kind of noted a couple like, you know either or things that I think Jesus can address. So one of them is this is, is forgiveness letting the person get off, right? It's either I forgive mm -hmm. them or they get justice, right? And it's not an either or in that sense. Like I can forgive you and still hold you accountable for the bad things you've done. Exactly. I can forgive you and not reconcile the relationship. You may, I can forgive you even if you're not sorry for what you did. Mm -hmm. even if the Baroness is still this kind of evil person and it's not healthy for me to be in relationship with her, then maybe the best thing I can do is to forgive you, which is forgiveness means I'm not expecting you to owe me anything again. Exactly. You don't owe me because you could never pay me back the thing you took from me. So I'm just letting go of that debt. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And this movie also brings up another one is uh, justice and revenge. How do I know when something is justice? How do I know it's revenge? There's a moment in the movie where what her real focus on is, I just want to get this ne necklace back that was stolen from me. Now, I'm not saying stealing something back is justice, but in the movie's kind of dichotomy, justice is about things being set right. Mm -hmm. Things being back to the way God intended them to be, right? So justice is really more about kind of things being fair and put back together and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But Cruella kind of moves past justice to revenge. Yeah. To I want to destroy you. I want to make it worse for you. 
I don't want us to be equal. I want you to be less than me. I want you to be hurt more than I am hurt, right? I want to pay you back for what you did. And more now, by the end of the movie, I will say the movie kind of deals with that where um, the the, uh, Baroness doesn't get killed, but she does go to prison Mm -hmm. for a different murder, which wasn't really a murder. We won't get into that. But she did murder someone, so she goes to prison. And just there's there's a consequence for that. Yeah. Uh, the Baroness, I I think it's interesting that the Baroness in like she makes the comment to Estella when she basically says, You can't care about other people, or she says something to that effect. It's like you can't care about other people and all these other things in order to be the best or the greatest right. at anything. And she says that, and I think in some ways, like the you know, kind of the dichotomy between Estella and Cruella, that's kind of where it starts to really yeah. merge because she's like, wait a minute. So you're saying the only way to climb is to step on everyone in the midst of it. And you see that in her relationships with Jasper and Horace. Like they they become like, you know, like Sawyer talked about, they become employees rather than friends. Right. And that's the things that happen when like in in things like revenge or things like especially things like revenge no one matters people don't matter only the result matters to people whereas justice a lot of times you're looking for things to be made right you're trying to restore things to right. a better version of itself or at least back to where it was in a safe state well, and I think you see this a lot. So I think you brought this up, Donnie, of the difference between confidence and cockiness mm-hmm. that, or even confidence and arrogance. And I think what you just said is kind of the way it goes. So you have Estella, who's the more kind of timid and subservient character. And then Cruella is kind of the, you know, she's empowered. She's mm-hmm. strong. But her version of empowerment um, is is not confidence. You know, confidence is I know who I am. Mm-hmm. I know who I am. And for and we can talk about this is how, how do you have confidence as a believer? And it's, I know who I am in Jesus. Mm-hmm. I know my worth in Christ. Right. And no matter what anyone does or says, that doesn't take away who I am. So I can be confident. I don't have to necessarily be a timid, right. The, the spirit did not give us a, a spirit of timidity. Yeah. Right. Um, but the, where she gets to is the one you just talked to of uh, what confidence means is I don't really care about people. I don't care about people's feelings. I don't care about what people, what I owe to people because confidence is I, I I don't owe anyone anything. And that's not really confidence. That's arrogance. That's yeah. confidence is I know who I am and I know who you are. Arrogance is I'm up here and you're down here. Yeah. Cause I think you see, you see the, um, the difference of what, what the outcomes are, because if you watch when she was, you know, living as Estella, she had friends that were willing to help her friends that were willing to work alongside her. Like Jasper put her first. He said, look, I, I saw an opportunity to help you. Now, granted he did it in, you know, a criminalish, a criminal way, but his intentions were, were good in wanting to, he wanted to get her in a position to be successful, you know, in that situation. Well, He even says to her at one point, do we even need to get this necklace? Exactly. Like you have this job, you have the thing you want. He's trying to be the voice of reason and really be a good friend and say, your pursuit of revenge is going to destroy you. Exactly. And like, you see that in that whole relationship, like in that, that, that change, it's that, that level of, because when you're confident, you're like, you know what? I am exactly who I am. And I will continue to work to grow as much as I can. And I will build the people around me as well as, you know, allow them to help me where I can. And you saw her going up in the ranks. She was improving. She was getting better. But she wanted, but as soon as she had a focus that moved her away from, you know, building confidence to building stature and reputation, now her focus no longer became the relationships and the people around her. It became the well, she outcome. goes, yeah, she goes from confidence to competition. She yeah. goes to, I have to defeat other people. And I think there's a way that this movie, I'd say the last 20 minutes, this movie is 20 minutes too long. That if this movie ends where Cruella, uh, her home gets burned down, mm-hmm. Jasper and, um, and Horace go to prison. She's lost her friends. She's lost her dream. Her, her pursuit of revenge destroys her. And then she goes and says, uh, I can't be the good Estella you wanted me to be, Mom. I'm going to be Cruella. And if that moment ends with her becoming the Cruella who 
is no holds barred evil. Mm -hmm. This movie's a tragedy and is really honestly a pretty great tale for children of, hey, revenge always ends up in in you becoming the villain. Someone Mm -hmm. may have wronged you. Someone may have done something horrible to you, and they are villainous in that way. But the moment you decide to be equally as evil to them, you become the villain. Mm -hmm. But what this movie does is there's another 25 minutes where by her embracing Cruella, and she literally by the end kills the Estella character Mm -hmm. uh, and puts that character to death, the movie makes that moment not a tragedy. It makes it a triumph. And I know Sawyer and I were talking about that at the beginning. So Sawyer, you want to speak to that? Yeah. So like, I I, I simply want to compare and contrast movies so that we got this one. It Cruella is on a war path towards revenge and not redemption. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to compare this with a movie that I love is the thing right now. Okay. That has a similar vibe, but it pulls it off better in my opinion. In the movie X-Men Days of Future Past. Okay. We have this character Mystique who we learn at the beginning of the movie is going to make some decisions that is basically going to destroy all of the heroes and stuff like that. And they need to go back in time and stop her. And in the moment, she is like about to like pull the trigger and kill the bad guy and get her revenge, but also set the path that's going to create these machines that are going to kill all the means. Okay. And what happens is like, she's forced to make the decision. Okay. What this movie doesn't does that. I just, I wish the movie would kind of more explicitly show is if you're going to go the redemption path, then make it come down to her making the choice to do something good. Okay. And the movie doesn't really do that is the thing. Um, well, and, I and so think, I, yeah, I think the movie ends by basically saying she had the right goal, but she had the wrong motive. Uh, yeah. And I think to the point you're making story, I think if the movie ends instead, and I don't really like to rewrite movies, but if, if, if the, because this is not the story they wanted to tell, but if the story they wanted to tell was about, Hey, vengeance is, is not the way to go. If she had just given up and said, Hey, you know what? She's going to do what she's going to do. I can't, I can't go down the path. And then maybe she still goes to prison because there's another character who figures something out and, reveals it and she goes to prison she still gets justice but it's whatever but cruella has moved on but the problem is the movie can't do that because they still need this to be the cruella in 101 dalmatians but they also don't it's a disney movie so we can't end it as a tragedy it has to end as a triumph and i think we as parents can have a conversation of that's not the way the world works there is no path that you continue in your pursuit of destroying this other person and it works out okay for you. Uh, Even though the movie, because this is a movie, the movie can tie it all up in a pretty bow and it, oh, it all worked out because she did get justice. It wasn't really revenge. But by embracing Cruella, I think that part of the movie makes it a little less in my mind, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it still is great for the conversation. I think it still is a great conversation you can have. And that's ultimately our goal. Our goal on this podcast is to help you have better conversations. So I I hope you're able to have great conversations with your kids about Jesus' path of forgiveness and redemption and love. And that just like while we were still sinners, Christ forgave us. They can forgive other people, even if that other person doesn't get what they deserve. They can still forgive them, love their enemies, and be like Jesus. And we hope you have a great conversation around that with this movie as you teach your children to love Jesus and his way of life even more. We'll see you next time.